Okay. Good morning again. Um, so today we are going to um, to do basically two things. Uh, well, we will start with with a few words on dates, but uh, very very quickly. Then we will move on an exercise like last time, covering uh, the things that we have seen on Thursday. Mm? So objects, uh, function construction, cons constructor, etc. And then the plan of for today is to do all the functional programming part of uh, JavaScript, well, the basic functional programming part of JavaScript, do another exercise uh, like an extension of the one that we are going to start here, and uh, start now, and finish this three hour stretch with um, a little bit of asynchronous programming that will, will, will be the, the topic of next lecture next week. Mm -hmm. So this is more or less the plan. Uh, let's see how well I can follow it. Uh, so first of all, dates, and then we will move on an exercise. Uh, well, what are dates? It should be obvious to everybody, but uh, in JavaScript, there is a build object for handling dates. That is called date, um, and that store, as shown here, a time instant with millisecond precision counted from epoch. So January 1st, 1970, UTC. Uh, but sh short, long story short, uh, it, it's quite nice uh, as an object uh, because it, independently on how you define a date, you can find, you see here, uh, 18 of March 2020 give you 18 of March 2020, midnight. Uh, but the same date, if written in another format, will give you 17 of March 2020, 11 p.m in the evening. So uh, it's not really easy to, to handle. Formatting is also locally dependent. And comparison is difficult uh, because it's, it's all a big object. So is, is there? There is a date object. Uh, you can use it. Uh, we will probably use it a bit. But for serious date time handling, nobody basically use the date, the date object, but everybody and what we are going to do now also here is to use some libraries that handles date and time better. Mm? So handling time and time zone especially is one of the most complex thing in probably all programming languages, well programming, uh, because it, it's always a mess. Um, and, and so there are libraries, and these are a few libraries that support, that extend the date object in a way in different flavors and we selected for this course this day.js as a library. This is a very thin library uh, but it's quite complete for what we need. Mm? Uh, and so here then the slides show you that the website, how to install it, how to import it and how to use it and there is a bit of documentation from the .js but it's the same documentation we can find on the website. So I'm not going to to read this because actually is not particularly complex. You can create a date, you can compare dates, you can see if a date is after another date or before another date. Uh, you can get the date of today, etc. So whatever you can imagine about dates, probably there is in some, in some way in the library. What we are going to do now, instead of reading the slides, is trying to use date, mm? date yes, so that we can actually uh, experiment with it. Mm? And we are going to use DJS to do this exercise. Mm? Uh, that is the transcript, the exam transcript. Mm? So similarly to what we did last time, that we did this core exercise, we are going to do a transcript now. So a series of objects to manage um, information about exams and the career. Mm? So we will define an exam 
object mm, that will have that properties. Mm. The course code, the course name, mm, the course name, um, the credits, the score, mm, and if it's a bool and if it's for honor, so 30 with Lode, we will have a boolean for that to say it's, it's, it is or not, and a date, that is the date in which you pass the exam. Mm. Uh, and then we will define a constructor function that is called exam, define another construction function that's called exam list, that will allow, that will contain a list of the exams, mm. the previous object, and these methods. So a method for adding an exam, defined as the object before, a method to find an exam giving the course code as a string, uh, a method to return a list of exam with all the exams that happen after a given date, then an, ad an array of exam uh, sorted by date, an array of exam sorted not by date but by score, and a method to uh, compute the average. Mm? So the average uh, value weighted for uh, credits. Mm? Uh, and we can for now ignore 30 with load mm? for the average. Mm? And then I was told you we will try also to implement these methods with functional programming that we are going to, to see in uh, a while. Uh, so, what we are going to do now is to set up the, the project for this, to add DJS, that is an external library, to uh, our project and to start doing the exercise. So, we can, for instance, do the add, so we can do everything including add, mm, the add methods, maybe also the find methods, and then we can, for instance, do the uh, list by date mm, uh, method together and we can leave the other three to the functional part mm, and be also editing the find with the functional part because they will be easier and shorter to do with the functional part mm, of most of these methods so we can start with three this three and uh, the construction function so what we need to do mm, first of all mm, since we need uh, uh, since we need um, to install an external library, mm, we are going to use uh, a command line tool that is already included in Node.js that's called NPM, that stands for Node Package Manager, that will allow you to, well, install, remove, etc., other libraries within a Node.js project. So first, the first thing that we need to do is to create a project here. To create a project and to have the list of the dependencies that our project, our exercise, will, will have. Mm? In this case, we know that we will have just one dependency, that is DJS. Yes. Mm? So to create a project, we need to write npm init, initialize. Mm? And this will ask us for a few information with some defaults, like which is uh, the package name, and we can, for instance, uh, leave a, a week two, the version, one, two, zero dot something, and we can write zero dot zero one. Uh, the description can be empty, uh, but uh, this is exercise three about transcripts. And the entry point, if there is a main file that we're going to use, and we can say, yes, the default is index, or we can say, okay, it's called exercise.js. Mm? That will be the name of the file that we are going to create. Uh, if there is any test command, specific test command, no. Uh, if there is a Git repository is associated to this project, no. Uh, some keywords, and the author, Mm, so we can say that the author is me and the license. And by default, you get this ISC, the open source license or any license that you want to attach to the project. Then it, it will show you um, preview 
of what this configuration is. If you press yes, you will see that a new file is created here that's called the package dot json that contains the same information we inserted and created mm. this is useful for for two reasons first if you're going to develop a, an extension a library for the others then these are the information about the library that others can use mm. and instead if you are in both cases if you are developing a library or a standalone program as we are going to do this file at a certain point will list all the dependencies that we are going to use with the version of the dependency of the external library that we installed. Mm. So this also is, is useful for to pass this project to another person on another computer and having, having all the dependencies installed uh, by um, NPM mm, with the, the exact number, the exact version that you are used for developing it. So there are a few information that are useful for this. And now we have this file. We have set up a project. That means having in this folder uh, right now the package.json uh, document, and we can install the JS. Mm. So if you, if you look on the, on the website, um, but also on the slides, it's the same. Uh, installation. It will tell you to write npm install the JS. And this is the typical way of installing uh, uh, libraries. npm install the name of the library. In this case, the JS. Mm. So npm install the JS. Mm. You need internet, obviously, because it downloads the library. And if you are lazy, you can also write npm i the js. Mm? So instead of install, just i the js. That's a shortcut for install. Mm? You press enter, mm? the package is very, very thin. It's just two kilobytes. So it's extremely easy and quick to install it. And you see what happens here. You see that now we have in the package JSON a new set that's called dependencies with, within the single dependency that we installed that's called DJS and exactly in the version 1.10.8. So if, if I pass this to you, you can reinstall the exact version that I'm going to, uh, I use now. So if it is one library, it's easy. If there are 10, it will be uh, more, more challenging without having this file, clearly. And notice what happens here also. And this is something that we will, again, find again, again especially with Node. Mm? Node we, uh, with React. React will do a lot of usage of this package.json. It creates another file that's called the package lock.json that is, let's say, an extended version of the package lock, that is, uh, the package.json that is automatically created by NPM, so you don't need to, to, to edit it. But if you delete it, you can recreate, the NPM is able to recreate automatically with more information, like, okay, DJS was taken from this address, mm, and this is the integrity code, and the DJS has, well, no dependencies in, in this moment, but maybe if a library has other dependencies, they are listed here. And so the tree of dependencies is listed in this file. This file exists, you don't have to touch it, just to, to know that it exists and is automatically created. And if you want more details, they are written here. And then there is another folder, so this, both these files, if you're using it, needs to be committed on Git, need to be pushed on the repository. And then there is a folder that we didn't have before, that is called node modules, that actually contains the source code of the library. Mm? So the DJS library was downloaded and unpacked and put here in a folder that is within your project. Mm? So here, this is actually the source code of uh, DJS. Mm? So you can also inspect the code if you want. Mm? 
and this folder, so now node, uh, node modules is just one folder, that is one library, but again, if you have multiple dependencies, you will have multiple things here in Node.js, in Node module. And the Node module is a folder not to commit on, or not to put on any version control system, hmm, because it will be regenerated from the, from not an NPM, and it also contains sometimes uh, speci operating system specific links or operating system specific feature. Hmm? So it's not, my node modules can work maybe on other Mac OS computer, but may or may not work on Windows. It depends on the libraries and on the native part maybe on the libraries. Hmm? So that folder doesn't need to be committed and uh, I, I will not put it on, on GitHub. And uh, also when you, we, when you go, we, you will do the projects and you will do the exam, you don't need to clearly to commit that, to, to deliver that, submit that for, to us. And if you do, I'm just uh, removing that folder, otherwise uh, it may not work, it may not work well, and recreate it uh, from scratch. So how to recreate the folder from scratch? So imagine that you don't have the folder. It, it's again, it's easy and it's the same command we have seen before. Uh, if you have a project without the node module folder, you just have to write in the terminal npm install without any other things after. npm install or npm hi will install everything from the package.json. Mm? So everything that is listed here, independencies will be installed, and so the node modules folder will be created. Mm? And this is again, if you download it, and we, we, if we delete the node modules, it's just enough to write npm install and press enter. And we'll get all the dependencies here installed. Mm? Okay? Yes? Okay. So, now that we created all of this, we can actually start the exercise. Mm. Uh, let me close this. Uh, so the first thing that we have to write is use strict. Good. Uh, then we can import this library the library that we installed. Um, and it's also written here how to import things. We will see with more details how to import library uh, because there is a slightly different way, okay, different way to import libraries in Node and in JavaScript running in the browser. Um, the, the version of, of Node is not standard but it was born before the standard version, so they coexist in this moment. And to import things in, in Node, uh, you have to create a variable that you can call it whatever you want because it's the name of the variable holding your library, the external library that you installed. We can call it the JS. And we have to write require and the name of the library. This will put in our DJS variable the link, let's say, the reference to the, the main entry of the library. So from now on, we can, when we use DJS, we can, uh, we actually use that library. So we can write console.log, for instance, DJS, open and close parentheses, and if we run this, um, no. node exercise, no, exercise.js, it doesn't work. I uh, cannot find modules.
Thanks. Yes. Oh. Okay. So you see that console log, DJS prints the raw representation of the DJS object. That is the current date. Yes. Uh, in here, in UTC, because it's 7.57, and it's not 7.57 in the morning, uh, but here, if you see the detail, so how are minutes, seconds, etc., you see that is 8.57. That is mm, the, correct, the correct time. Mm. So it automatically gets the time zone from the, the operating system and show you both the say, bare date in uh, UTC and also mm, a more complex a split object with different parts uh, in the current mm, time and date. And this is pretty, okay, this is the JS. Yes. It's just calling the, let's say, the constructor that will give you the current date and time. Mm. And then uh, we can, mm, for instance, have a look. Um, for instance, uh, mm, not this. We can so parse, create a string, mm, create a new object with a custom format. Mm. We, we can specify it here, so before month, then day, then here. Uh, we can we can we do uh, quite a lot of things. We can manipulate dates. So we can add mm, to the date, mm, to the day of, to, to now, we can add seven day to now and see the result. Mm. And this will create an object that represents the date of next Tuesday, this hour, because it's seven days. Mm, or you can say seven weeks, seven months, whatever number you want of quarter, years, hours, etc. So it's, it, it, it does, again, many of the things that you may have in, in, in mind and uh, I was looking for after okay mm. and you can also show see mm, if if a given day is before another one mm. so the first line there say the current day is before uh, the 1st of January 2020, 2011 and it give it true if it's, it's true or false otherwise mm. and you can also specify an order so it would like to be before to the exact millisecond or just the year or just the month before mm. that specific date so with the granularity of the comparison and there is also is after etc mm. so all again many things that you can do for compared with dates and to handling dates and time um, for, for various things. Okay, mm? so we, we keep this documentation here uh, and we deleted this console log because we don't need the console log for D uh, actually. Um, well, I, I told you that this is, and this is a preview. Uh, if, you, if you write this on uh, the require on Visual Studio Code and you leave the pointer the most pointer on it, it say, this is a common JS module. Mm, that, that is the way in which Node.js uh, import libraries. Um, it may be converted to the, an ES module, that is the standard module way to create things. But by default, without changing anything, is not working the other way in, um, in Node, but just to give you a preview, this is the other way of importing module. Import something from a library. That is way more common too. This is not working Node.js. Mm? So if we, if we are going to do this, it's not working. 
there is a way to have this work, but it needs to be set up separately hmm, within the project. By default, it's not working. In Node, it's working in JavaScript standard. Uh, and so in, in Node, the, the working way, by default, is still the common JS syntax, that is variable equal require. But we will going to use import when we are going to move on JavaScript in the browser. Because instead, in that environment, import is a standard way, because it's actually the standard way to do that, and require is not working, because it requires for Node.js. Mm? So there is this still this uh, a bit of um, not alignment between the two environments, the web and Node. Mm? For, again, historical reason, require uh, was born before import, and they didn't uh, put it uh, import by default yet. They will be, probably. OK, so let's go back to the exercise. Mm. Uh, the first thing that he's asking us is to define a construction function exam to create a new object with those mm, variables, those elements. The code, the name, the credits, the score, and the date. So we need to build a construction function. Do you remember how to build a construction function? What do I need to write here? Uh, OK function because it's actually a construction function and so we need to create a function exam with the capital E uh, because it's the the norm to have the a construction function with uh, the capital letter and then hmm, body of the construction function and we have we need to have parameters here to create the object exam yes and which are these parameters? We have code, we have name, we have credits, we have date, course, name, credit, and sc score. Score, and we can also have the Boolean for the load. Mm? And we can say that this is false. So do you remember load equal false? What is? OK, so it's the fault value if it's not uh, pass. Mm, this, this load is not passed to the, the construction, it will be false. Otherwise, we'll get the, uh, the value that is passed through. OK, and here it's a constructor, so it should be easy. This dot code equal code, this dot name equal name, this dot credits, equal credits, um, this dot date, equal date, and this dot score, equal score, and then let's say this point dot load equal load. Then we can also put together load and score but for this moment, let's keep them separate. Mm. So we can collect all in a score, uh, in a score string with the number and an L for the load. But let's keep it separate as is um, describing here. Mm. Number plus Boolean. So let's, for, the, for now, keep it separate. Mm. Again, we can put it in a single variable, but let's keep separate this for, for the moment. Um, OK. Do you agree? Yes? And then, uh, define a construction function exam list uh, with the following method. Mm. So another construction function, function exam list with the following method. And we said that the methods uh, are add, find, 
so let me write it as a comment add find after date find after date list by date list by score list by date list by score and average average And we have said that we are going to uh, create the add, mm. um, the find, and uh, what we said, the uh, list by date, for instance. So, and we will leave the others for the, the next step. Okay. Hmm. Okay, so let's try to do this method, hmm. the add method. What we are going to write here. The add methods, hmm, the definition is pass a fully constructed exam object so as a parameter and store it in the exam list so what we need first of all a list to store the object somewhere so we can say here this dot list and it, it will be an empty list because at the beginning we have no, no exams. Mm? So now the add will just add things to the list mm, that we, we created. Mm? So mm, uh, we can create this as a narrow function, uh, exam, and this dot list, we can use push to add it in the end, uh, exam. Mm -hmm. So we created the add method for the exam list object. Mm -hmm. So let's try if this is working. Um, so let me for a moment comment this. So how we can try if it is working, we can create a few exams. We have the constructor. So we can write, for instance, const web application one equal new exam. And we need the code that I don't remember. Uh, so let's say 01 ABC. Uh, the name that is web application one the credits that are six, um, the date. Now we need the date. What, what we are going to write here for the date? We need the date in which you are go we, we all are going to pass web application one. So it will be probably a date in the future with respect to now because to make it real, realistic. Mm. So it would be somewhere in June, 2022. But what we are going to write. So let's say the, the 7th of June, 2022. June. Yes, so DJS, open parenthesis, so here you see how to create a string. Mm? So this is a, 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 an object from a string with the day, the time. We don't really care about the time because you are just the, 
the date of the exam. You don't care if it's 4 p.m., 3 p.m., 11 a.m. It's the date of the exam. Uh, so, well, hopefully not 1 a.m. Um, so it's 2022 uh, minus 06 minus 07. Hmm? And then the score and the Boolean. We, we, we are going, doing a, a good job for this exam. Um, we get the maximum. Good. And then we can create another object, another exam. Um, software engineering. Um, new exam, whatever it is the code. Uh, the name, software engineering one, right? Is software engineering one or just software engineering? Software engineering one. Um, credits, uh, six. Uh, let's say six. Uh, date, uh, like before, um, 2022, July 02. And uh, I don't know, 28. This student is better in web application than software engineering. Get a better score, at least. And uh, okay, so we created two exams. Now we can create an exam list and add the exams within the exam list with the add method. So const uh, exams equal new exam list so we build the object and then we say uh, exams dot add web application one and exams dot add softang and we can do for instance console dot log we can print the uh, or the, the the exams, let's see wh what we can see if we print the exams, hmm? the, the entire object with these two, um, with these two. Hmm? So, new terminal, and I forgot a J somewhere. So you see that printing the list will give you, well, uh, the exam list. This is the raw representation of the list. Mm? Uh, so exam list, that is a list of two objects that are the exams. Uh, the first exam is web application, six the, with a date that here is not expanded. Mm? Um, and the same thing for the other mm? exam with 28 and by default without load. And then there is this function that again is not expanded that is the add hmm, function that is the only function we the only method we created hmm? so it, it seems working it added these two exams here again this is just the raw representation hmm? we, we can instance for instance iterate on the list and print them in a nicer way hmm? but we, let's focus on the on the on the methods now hmm? just to see if it is working. Now, find. Find is asking you to, given a code of a course, return the matching exam. Mm? So giving 0, 1, ABC, mm? it will return the, um, the course that is represented by that code. Or and find if that does not exist. Hmm? So, hmm? Uh, this is the code. What we're going to write here.
So let's see if the list has a function for finding, uh, so array. Um, So you, we can use yes, list.find, but we are not going to use it. Let's let's do it by hand. Yeah, we can do a for loop. For arrays is off or in? Off. Queen <laughs> four. Um, let's say const c just give you the idea of course or we can also write also course it's it's fine because we are iterating on the list of courses so for course uh, of this dot list And sorry, exactly. Hmm? If uh, C dot code strict equal to code uh, return c and then um, outside of the four we can say return undefined mm -hmm. so if never returned c we just return undefined because we we didn't find any uh, course mm -hmm. so then we we can also use the find um, but there is a call back here, so we, we can use it after. Um, so le let's do it without the, with the normal, let's say, by hand, so that we can also experiment with the, the four cycle a bit, iterating a list, uh, on, yes, on our race. Um, so let's check if this is working. Uh, so we can write here exams.find and write 0, 1, A, B, C. And maybe we can just print the results directly. Mm. It, it's not nice, but at least we, we see the, the entire object. Mm. So we see here mm, that Actually, it finds mm, clearly the the object that is web application one, and instead, if we find uh, something that is clearly not a code and clearly not in the in the list, mm, you see that we s we found undefined. That is the expected result because the is not uh, up to now because it's not it's not present in the list. And so here we can do something. So if we get the code, the, the course, the exam, we can do, I don't know, extracting the, the name or the score or whatever. Otherwise, if it's undefined, we can just say, okay, no, no, no exam found. You have to still take the exam, for instance, for this course. So give a, a, an error message. Hmm? Okay, so next up. Um, List by date. List by date returns an array of exams sorted by date, increasing date. So you know the game, what we are going to write here?
the name of the list uh, here list with huge imagination <laughs> Uh, return this dot list dot sort and then we are going to write something in sort uh, yes but let's stop here why this is not good this is yes because sort edit the, the array in place so once we call these ones from that moment on the list will be always ordered in that way so the original list will be ordered in that way hmm? yes it is a problem because <laughs> because they returns the what where is here returns an array of the exam so we don't want to to change the original also because we have a list by score so we we cannot continue to change the original. So the original array should remain in, in the original order, that is by insertion, probably. And then we, if we need the, or, the order by date, we can call the methods, get a new array with the order by dates and similar thing for score. Mm. Um, so given that this is a problem, how we, how we fix it? We duplicate the list. How? With the triple dot look at the notation, so with the spread, with the spread operator. Mm. Mm. So this will create a, a copy of the list because we're spreading the content on the array in another array, and then we can do is use sort. Mm. So we are sorting in place the new list that is a copy. Uh, so do you remember sort? Uh, oh, actually it's written here somewhere. Sort. Hmm? Well, sort in place, hmm? and we know that sort by default sort in alphabetical order. So it converts everything in a string and sort uh, the string. And is, is not something that we, we want or it's useful for us. So we need, as we did last time, to specify a comparison function mm, that define the sort order. Mm. And here you see, and most importantly, that comparison function should return either a positive number if the if we need to sort the second element before the first, a negative number, vice versa, or zero if we don't need to change the order. And then it's just a comparison function. Then the algorithm for which sort works is it's different, depends. So we need to specify the, if it's quick sort or match sort, we don't need to specify this. We need to just specify which is the criteria for ordering the element. And so we have seen last time that, so here there is sort of pseudocode. Um, we have seen last time that for ordering numbers from the smaller to the bigger, we can create a function, mm, the comparison function that returns A minus B. Mm. So that the number is negative if it needs to shift before, positive otherwise, or if they are the same number, they don't need to move because 4 minus 4 is 0, so they need to move the position. Okay, so here we have dates. So we can create a callback, this comparison function, with A and B as parameter, like in the documentation, and what we need to do to you. We need to sort by date. So the 1st January should come before the 10th of July of the same year. So 
you say a a dot date minus b dot date something like this Yes, so why this is not working? Because date is a complex object. And so see here, date. What, what they are going to do, the difference between which elements? It's an object, so which, which is the, the sense of making a difference between two objects. Mm -hmm. So what we instead can do is keep the same concept. We want to, to do subtraction. We do to have one thing is after the other. And we can use is after. So we can say a date dot is after b dot date. Then we can return one, otherwise minus one. So if it's after, we just need to, to move it after. If it's before, we need to otherwise we need to move it before. And since we don't have time, we don't really care to specify times, hours, etc. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Which subtract? Ah, uh, here, yeah. in uh, the, the other subtract. Um, where it was here. It does a subtraction of time. It gives you the rest. So today minus yesterday is a, a, a number of hours. It's like add. So now adding something, it will give a new date here, just an amount of time. I know because these subtract methods um, but the problem is that it will give you a date here and you need minus one or one right with to specify the amount of time we subtracted so yes not not hours but uh, yes if it's today uh, minus yesterday's hours but if you say today minus seven years, it will give you the, the 8th of March, 20, so seven years ago. Mm. That is not a criteria for ordering because sort needs minus one for moving, plus a negative number, actually, not minus one, any negative number. Could be also minus 100. Mm. A positive number to shift and it's zero to keep it in the same order, in the same position. Okay, do you have any question? No. Because it's just one line. So it's going to return. So it's it's an automatic implicit return because it's just one one line that is need to return either one or minus one. Yeah, if I put the the other should write return a, so this yeah. No. Okay. We can do a list by score. That should be the same, basically, or very similar. List by score equal. So what we are going to write here, list by, uh, say yes, list by score, same thing as list by date, but ordering by score.
So first, do you have any question? Maybe some clarification over there? No? Question? No. So what, what we are going to write here in list by score? At a certain point, yes. <laughs> so return as before. Hmm? Return spread this dot list dot sort um, we we can clearly we can use a and b but we can call it that variable as we prefer if it's helping us to remember what they are in this case probably not too much because it's just a comparison function but we can call it also b element one element two so in the signature is A and B, but they are actually two variables. Mm? So A and B, um, and as before, um, A, sorry, B dot score minus A dot score. Those are numbers, and we don't have the lode, so it's just numbers and should be it's just a sorting. Um, if we sort without the function, will it change something? So consider this is more correct. If we just write sort without the function, what will happen? It will still have the right results or not? How many of you agree on the right results? <laughs> okay, how, how many of you say the right results? <laughs> One say, two say the minor results. Well, two and a half say the minor results. Do you, the others disagree or no opinions? Actually, in this specific case, with numbers that represent score starting from 18 and going to 30, you get the same result. Because num with sort, hmm, everything is converted to a string. And in a string, one is smaller than two and is smaller than three. So now you have 18, 20, 22, 25, 30. So you will have first all the ones, then all the seconds and then all the thirds. And so you will always get 18 before 30 because one is smaller than three. And you will also get 18 uh, before 19 because one is the same, but eight is, small, is smaller than nine, even as a string. You will have bad results. So this is more precise. So this is more correct. But the other one give you the impression that it works, but you will have bad results if you include in this list in sufficient score. If you include in this list three, that is not uh, a score that you can get from passing an exam, but if you include in this three, then you have three coming after 29. And that is not, is not good, it's not correct. Yeah, but we have That's true, yeah. Actually, that's true. So, I'm sorry, yes. Uh, so this is true if you just have scores, uh, like last time. But if you have a complex object, clearly you, are, you, know, you have probably, we don't know what we have, because it's, it's a conversion of an object in a string. So that's true, actually. Um, so what I said is correct if you just have a list of numbers of past exams. So what, like we did uh, last time. Um, now in this case, you have a more complex object. So the sorting will give you unspecified, uh, unpredictable results. So you need to specify this clearly. Good. 
Yes. By decreasing score. So 30 to 18. Okay, any other questions? Yes. Uh, well, not in this case because the L, I, I, we keep the L separate. So if we just order by score, we, you know, if instead we keep the L with the score, we, we need to do this, this additional check. If it's 30 or 30 with a, an L and then in that case put the L before. So it will be a little bit more complex. It wouldn't be one line, clearly. Okay? Okay, so we, we can, we will continue this uh, with some functional methods. Um, the other one, the other thing. So after dates and average, and we also redo, um, we find with the, um, with the functional method, so just to, to experiment. And then again, we can also use find, the find method. Um, okay. So, uh, as I was saying before, this is part of the uh, asynchronous programming of JavaScript in which we introduce callbacks, and we already use a callback, the one for sort, uh, and uh, the functional methods um, here, even if they are not, told, not strictly asynchronous. And asynchronicity is one of the key elements in JavaScript, and it's uh, something really different from other programming language for how JavaScript works mm, uh, in this case. Clearly, you have asynchronous programming also in other programming language, um, but here it's working slightly different. Mm. So first of all, callbacks. Mm. So callbacks are function, mm, like the function for that we use for the sort. The function passes an argument is a callback. Uh, and specifically, is a function passing to another function an argument, which is then invoked inside the other function to complete some kind of works, some kind of, of action. And these callbacks could be either synchronous or asynchronous. So in the case of sort, they are synchronous. Hmm? So they are executed in order and stop the execution of the program until the function is not complete. Mm. So the sort stops the execution of the program until the sort is not completed. Mm. And you see here, you can either use uh, callbacks or you can create a callback. Mm. So here, you, uh, there is a function called create quote that has two parameters. One is a string and the other one is a callback. It's called callback, but it's a name of a parameter. And then this function, what it does, take the quote and put it mm, after the sentence, like I always said, the quote. Mm. And then call this other function to the variable my quote. Mm. And here, this other function is not specified because it needs to be passed as a parameter, like for sort. And this should be a function that print some way this quote, because it's a string, so probably it needs to be printed. Uh, so here, when the, the function is called, we pass two parameters. The first one is a string, and the second one is a function. Which function? This one created a doc that is called log quote that get a string as a parameter and just do console.log. So the usual console.log printing, but it could be also other kind of prints. And so here, when we pass this as a parameter, 
we pass this function as a parameter and so here in the body of the function we call actually log quote with a parameter my quote so the results will be running this the result will be like as always said uh, web app one rocks and if we change log.quote to log quote in something that print on file or save on a database etc this all this still continue to work because the callback here doesn't know how how this function works it doesn't know that he had to call the function pass as a parameter and it needs to receive a to pass a string and then this function will do something with the string hmm? in this case just a console.log so this is a very simple and not a really useful example because we, we, we could have just written here console.log but again, if we imagine to have a console.log and a, a database.log and a file writing, etc., we can pass different callbacks and retain the create quote function to do all the other works and then delegate the piece of work of writing that quote somewhere to the callback that we pass here. So again, another thing to increase in flexibility for what concerns JavaScript. And so callback, again, could be synchronous or synchronous, and the sort is an example of synchronous callback. And we have done this now, basically. Uh, and this callback just provides the sort criteria for sorting. It doesn't specify which is the algorithm of sorting. So this is part of the sort method. It's just the comparison. And we know the sort change the array in place. Uh, this is another example of a synchronous callback that is provided by JavaScript. That is the filter function. That as the name say, filter according to a criteria. And differently from the sort, filter happens not to edit the array in place, but generates another array so return a copy a new array sorry a new array not a copy a new array with the results of the operation mm -hmm. and in this case you, a filter is a functional method actually and here you see an example mm -hmm. so we have this object this list of objects called market and we have three um, um, stocks uh, one for Google, the other one for Amazon, and the other one for Microsoft. And they have a variation with respect to the previous stock, whatever it is. Uh, two of them has a negative variation and the, the, the Amazon instead of a positive variation. And we can use filter to say we want from this list only the stocks that had a positive or a negative variation. We want to filter the list and get only one, the things that satisfy specific criteria. Mm. So here mm, you see how we can do it for um, negative variation. Mm. So we want to get all the stocks who get a negative variation. Mm. So filter get a callback here that get a parameter A in this case called stock just to remember what we're going to do and say return the boolean that is the results of variation uh, less than zero so return those elements mm, the entire elements mm, the entire objects where this parameter var of that element is less than zero so it's negative mm. so this return a new array with just the elements that satisfy this condition mm. so when this condition is true they are moved copied into the new array if the condition is false they are not mm? and clearly we can do also the opposite mm? we can write variation greater than zero to retain only the elements that uh, satisfy that condition mm? so uh, as the name say is just for filtering mm? so filters a collection of, info of data and give you back the pieces of data that respect 
that filter, so in this case, minor and major. Mm? And this is uh, part of the functional programming. Uh, let's just give you a, a brief overview and then we can have a, a break. Uh, so, in general, what is, do, do you know what is functional programming in general? Yes, yes, more or less. Someone yes, someone no. So, very, very briefly. Uh, it's a programming paradigm. So, object-oriented programming is a programming paradigm. Functional programming is another programming paradigm. Uh, where you structure the code via functions. So you build functions. Function have some properties in this in this paradigm. Uh, and this is not the main uh, paradigm of JavaScript, but it also JavaScript also has this paradigm, and specifically for arrays. We we will see so all these methods here are functional methods for iterating on arrays, for instance in addition to the four. Um, it's, so it, it supports some sort of functional programming uh, style. Uh, it's a uh, more declarative style than imperative. And so imperative is just the, for instance, the loop for, the for loop. Uh, declarative is that you declare what you want to have. You want to have the elements filtered that respect a certain criteria. Mm? You don't want to cycle on the element until you find that new one and then save it in a variable and return it, etc. Mm? Uh, and it can improve readability also. Mm? So here you have the same thing mm? on the green side, the filter function that we, the filter method that we have seen, and on the red side the declarative methods, the non-functional method, in which this filter function is doing all the filtering, like the, the other function, but it, you see it's, it's long, there is a cycle, etc. Yes. There are difference and features. Um, especially uh, it, it's it's more a, a different paradigm to do things It's like uh, I don't have a clear answer to your question it's like saying is object-oriented programming as clear drawbacks depends on what we are speaking with probably uh, but it's it's a different way to structure things and to reason about things so for in object-oriented you think about classes and methods and object here you think about functions so it's, in a way, it's more powerful, it's more, it, it's declarative, it's not, um, it's declarative, uh, it increases readability in some cases, in other, you need to reason in a specific way, and you cannot do some of the things, if you follow a pure functional paradigm, you cannot do some of the things that you're used to, so you cannot use a, fa a four cycle, or you cannot um, uh, change too much, uh, so you, you have to, for instance, you can composite, you can do function composition. So there are some rules that are different. And so there will be some pros and cons with respect to the other paradigm. But it's, it's a different paradigm. And, and here, just to be clear, we're not going to, to speak about functional programming in general. We just give you a brief introduction to, uh, to use these three, four methods that JavaScript uh, proposed because they are, again, easier to use than not and quicker to use than not the, the imperative method, especially for arrays. Um, so we are, we are not going to ask you to, to create function according to this paradigm. It depends on the programming of the language. So JavaScript support many paradigms, no? sort of object-oriented, functional, imperative, etc. There are programming languages that as functional programming as the main paradigm and, and, and they are 
uh, say, efficient enough for, for doing uh, what they need to do. And there are other advantages for functional programming. In more, maybe, a mathematical oriented way, it's also easier to, to do some things with functional programming faster from a developer code, but for efficiency it depends also on the, on, the pro on, the, on the language, on the, the environment of the language. So if you do this in Python or in JavaScript or in C, you have clearly differences, uh, even if you follow the same paradigm. Um, okay, just to give you the four properties uh, of the functional paradigm, uh, the four main properties um, that also we are going to encounter the, some of these. So functions are first class citizen. And this is pretty clear in, in JavaScript. We, we have seen that we can pass functions, we can return function, we can assign function to a variable. So we can use a, a function with, as we, mostly as we use a variable, uh, other kind of object, or the kind of construct in the programming language. And this is something that JavaScript allow us to have, using function, passing function, returning function, et cetera. So it's by, by design already suitable for this. Uh, but function must be in a functional programming paradigm, first class citizen. So treated as the other, um, as they were variables of constants. So if you can do something with a variable or an element, elementary type, you should be able to do this also for the functions. Uh, you need to have in the language higher order function that are function that operates on functions taking one or more function as argument and typically returning a function. And all, all of this is possible in JavaScript. You can have a function that operates on a function. Uh, you can have callbacks to, to give uh, a function as a parameter. You can also return a function. We, we have seen last time hmm, returning a function um, in the closure example. And then you can also compose function. Hmm? So you can putting together, creating function to, to simplify, so one function can use another function on, on the results of the first one, et cetera. So you can create a, a call chain hmm, that is uh, returning a result of the same type of the argument so that multiple functional operator can be applied in order. Hmm. So you can call filter and then after filter you maybe can call another functional method that will apply on the results, et cetera. So you can create a chain of function if you want. So these are the most notable four properties of uh, the paradigm. Um, and functional programming also required avo avoiding mutability. Hmm? That is uh, one of the change of perspective that you, you, you have to, to learn, let's say to use uh, functional programming if you want, that is don't change obje object in place. And so a function shouldn't change an object mutate an object, hmm? but should return a new object. So that's why filter return a new object. It doesn't change the object. This is another property. Uh, so if you need, for instance, to perform a change in an array, return a new array. So sort is not, for instance, functional, purely functional, because it changed the array in place. It doesn't, so it, it, it mutate the array. Hmm? Instead, in a functional paradigm, you need not to change anything. You just get a new hmm, element back and you operate on the new element and then get a new element back, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Be because they implemented it this way. <laughs> I, I don't hear I don't an answer to that. Um, it, it, uh, so for, for sure sort is not Part the, it could it could clearly return a new array. It's not part of the functional operator. Um, this, yeah, so the functional operator that operates on arrays. So you see, it's not here. Uh, sort. Um, so it's it's another function like find, like mm, uh, any other things, and it, it's more general from that reason. And they, when they created sort, they decided to to change things. So as I told you last time. Uh, a lot of methods in the array either change the array in place or return a new array. And there is no a, a, clear, a clear rule, a clear distinction. You have to, to know the, or to read in the documentation uh, what the method is doing and then say, okay, okay, this is changing in place, so 
I, I need to remember, I need to create a copy. Oh, no, this is not changing in place, so it's fine. Or maybe it's not fine because I want to, to change in place, and so I need to, to do other operation. Uh, but for sure, functional programming uh, would prefer not to change in place. And all these methods doesn't uh, change in place. They return something new. Hmm? Uh, and these are the, uh, we're going to see all of them after the break. These are the uh, functional methods for iterating over arrays in JavaScript. Uh, filter, we already have an example with filter here. But there are others, there are iterators. So for each, for each is the functional version of the for cycle, hmm? let's say. So process each element with a given callback, that is F. Uh, then there is other iterator, every and some. Check whether all or some elements in array satisfy a condition. That is a Boolean condition, passed as a callback, that is F. Uh, then we have iterators that return a new array, like filter. You filter the collection and return only the, the right results, the results that you want, and also map. And then you have uh, an operator that's a little bit more complex, it's called reduce, that is accepting a callback function on all the items of an array to progressively compute a result. So in one line you can perform, for instance, an average because it's progressing, compute uh, our results. And we are going to see all of these, all of them with some example after the 15 minutes break that we are going to have now. <laughs>